Okay, so this is our third to last point for today's lesson, and we're just talking about why we need a ventilation system. So with ventilation, when we inspire, then we bring in fresh air, and then we get rid of any, and in expiration, then we get rid of any stale air. But why do we need this? The reason why is that we need it for gas exchange. Let's draw a graph here. So say for example, if we had, um, we had, we're talking about oxygen. And we have high levels of oxygen in fresh air that comes inside, right? So high levels of oxygen in fresh air. And the blood inside the lungs will be relatively deep. So there won't be that much oxygen. So then the oxygen level might be here. So oxygen level of blood inside lungs. The key thing about gas exchange is that it that occurs by diffusion. So you need this gradient here to occur, okay? So if the gradient is very high, then the gas exchange will occur very quickly. So that's why, so that's if you have high levels of oxygen in fresh air. But let's think about if you had stale air. What, what kind of levels? Will the levels in stale air, will they be high or low? The levels of oxygen. So all the oxygen has been used up. Yeah, so it'll be relatively low. It'll still be a bit higher than the levels inside the blood of the lungs, but it won't be that much higher. So it might be like, you know, here. It might be smaller than here. Check out this gradient. That's a crappy gradient. Yeah, so there's not going to be that much gas exchange here. So this is a good gradient. This is crappy. So that's why you need high levels of oxygen in the, fre in the fresh air to be inside your lungs. That's why you need ventilation. So it works for oxygen, and if we draw a graph for carbon dioxide, it's exactly the same thing except reverse, okay? So let's draw it for educational point of view. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> he doesn't want to leave, but that's okay. So let's think about carbon dioxide. So the levels of carbon dioxide in the blood inside the lungs, they're going to be relatively high because we've built up lots of these waste gases. So these are the levels here. So CO2 levels in blood inside lungs. It's going to be relatively high. And the CO2 level inside um, fresh air is going to be relatively low. So we'll just repeat that. So the CO2 level inside fresh air is going to be relatively low. Okay. Okay, but if we look at the CO2 level inside the stale air, that's when all the CO2 has kind of come outside of the body and it's in that stale air now. So is that going to be high or low? It's going to be relatively high. So, yeah, so say for example, if we had, if we were, so we're breathing now and you've got the gas exchange, so you've got the oxygen moving uh, you've got the oxygen moving, so let's draw our alveoli again. 
here. So the oxygen moves, so this is our alveoli, and then there are blood capillaries on the outside. And this is our blood capillary, so there's blood running through this. So the blood running through here. And the blood is in really close contact, which you'll see in the next point. So the blood is running in really close contact um, to the alveoli. And what happens is that gas exchange occurs. So there's CO2 attached to the red blood cells, and that goes out. Because no one likes CO2, right? So the CO2 goes out. But because of an exchange, so something has to go inside, right? So what goes inside? Yeah, yeah exactly. CO2. CO2 goes inside. So let's think about it. So CO2 is initially in the red blood cells. Now it's in the stale air that's kind of come out here. So if you kind of just sit there and don't breathe for a while, then the air inside your lungs will be all stale because it's got lots of CO2. All the O2 has gone inside the red blood cells and so it's getting very stale inside now, I can tell. And so I'm, I've taken a deep breath in and what happens there is that I have fresh air. So if I bring fresh air in, what's going to happen to the O2 and CO2? It's going to be high O2 and low CO2. So that's low CO2 here. In the stale air, we have low O2 and high CO2. Good. So what does high CO2 comparing to, so we're talking about air and the, and the blood. So every time there's that, then we have to talk about the gradients. So if it's a big gradient, then gas exchange will occur rapidly. So this is a good gradient, yeah? If the difference between the two levels is slight, then it's going to be a shallow gradient or a crappy gradient. And that's bad because you won't have that much carbon dioxide leaving. The carbon dioxide will stay there. That's why we need a ventilation system. So let's go through these important points. So there's two really reasons which are like the reciprocal of each other. They're like the opposite of each other. The first point is to maintain high oxygen levels. Um, and the second point is to maintain low CO2 levels as well. Okay? So these points. So this point here as well as this point here. So remember that you need, you want high O2 levels, you want low CO2 levels. Why do you need that? It's because of diffusion. Diffusion needs a high gradient. So in order to have a high gradient, you need to have low CO2, um, sorry, so you need to have high O2 inside the, the air. So the air can move from the air inside the lungs into the blood, yeah? And you want it to have low CO2, so the CO2 can move outside from the blood into the air. Yeah? And the final point is that ventilation allows high alveolar concentration of O2. So you want to maintain high yeah, O2 and low CO2. Yeah, high O2 and low CO2 in the air. Yeah? Mm-mm. 